Let's first draw the diagram. It looks like this at point. I'm drawing it arbitrarily. Will give you the values. This point is A, B, C, D, E. And this point is H. This is the direction of available turning moment. This is the direction of crank rotation angle okay and uh, this uh, whole uh, this is one cycle presented here this is okay what else is given is uh, mean area under the turning moment diagram is given mean area under the turning moment diagram is given and what is that from a to b this area is 0.5 obviously negative you see this is just below zero line this is zero line between a and b this is 0.5 let me write them e f g and h other so between b and c this area is 1.2 uh, the, all these areas are given in centimeter squares. Okay, these areas are in centimeter square. So this that means this area is minus. This is 0.5 centimeter square. This area is 1.2 centimeter square. Okay. Likewise, mine then minus 0.95. Next one is 1.45. Next one is minus 0.85. And the next one is 0.71. And the last one is minus 1.06. OK. What else is given is uh, here axis. Mm, the scale is given scale means let, let's say this x axis along x axis one centimeter of this diagram along x axis x axis one centimeter that means in this diagram one centimeter along x axis is equals to pi by six Okay, radian, pi by six radian, and uh, and y axis one centimeter is equals to seven hundred newton meter. Okay, and the average engine speed that is also given. Average engine speed is 800 RPM. Okay. We have another data given here that is maximum fluctuation of speed shall not exist, ex uh, shall not exceed maximum. Fluctuation of 
speed shall not exceed two percent. So these are the few data which is given in this problem. And uh, we need to determine the question is determine question is determine moment of inertia of the flywheel. We have to determine for this. This is the turning moment diagram given, and uh, to smoothen this operation, we need to use a flywheel. And uh, the question is, what should be the moment of inertia of the flywheel? That we need to determine. All these things are given. So directly, we want to use this. Uh, this result, this formula we want to use, and then we need to find out what is this maximum fluctuation of kinetic energy, what is omega average, and what is Ks. From the given data, can you tell me what is the omega average? What is omega average from the given data? See, the engine speed is the omega average. It should not, uh, and it is given that the speed should not exceed 2%. So omega average is nothing but 800 RPM. And uh, we, if we want to convert it to a radian per second, we must multiply 2 pi by 60. That gives you radian per second, OK? Omega average. So the second quantity already given that is coefficient of fluctuation of speed. That it is said that maximum fluctuation of speed shall not exceed 2%. So that means Ks is nothing but 2%. 2% means what is the value? 0 0.02, right? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, yes. sometimes give me response. Otherwise, what happens is that there is a network problem. So, I don't know. Okay, so um, we have omega average Ks. Now, um, our next uh, task is to find out what is the maximum fluctuation of next task is to find out what is the maximum fluctuation of kinetic energy. Okay? We need to find out this. If once we find out this, we the problem is solved. Okay. To find out this, if we go back, what what is the definition? What we need to find out uh, for the maximum fluctuation of uh, kinetic energy? This maximum fluctuation of kinetic energy. Here is the definition. So this gives you theta one to theta two. Whatever the balance uh, moment d theta okay that we need to do so the first task is we need to find out where is theta one and where is theta two which point gives you the minimum speed which point gives you the maximum speed how to find out minimum speed means the crank angle related to minimum speed and crank angle related to maximum speed from this diagram, can we find out crank angle related to minimum speed and maximum speed? Crank angle relevant to minimum and maximum speed 
we need to find out this how to find out from here can you can somebody tell me from this diagram can we find out which crank angle because this axis is crank angle which crank angle is uh, associated with minimum speed it is very simple the relation is linear speed and the kinetic energy not linear but uh, yeah, quadratic uh, relation between kinetic energy and speed that we know from here, I into omega square. So when this omega square is minimum, that means that their speed is minimum. So that means where kinetic energy is minimum, the speed is minimum, kinetic energy is maximum, speed is maximum. So maximum kinetic energy minus minimum kinetic energy gives you the maximum fluctuation of kinetic energy. Is it not? Hello? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we need to find out where the kinetic energy is maximum, where the kinetic energy is minimum. That that's what the problem we have now. So maximum kinetic energy and kinetic energy where it is minimum. So this we have to find out and using this diagram. So as we discussed in our last class that you see the maximum or minimum can happen only at the crossing points, right? Because throughout this, this is subtraction. Throughout this, this is addition. So the maximum cannot happen here. <coughs> maximum will happen here only. Maximum will can happen here only. Maximum can happen here only. On the other hand, minimum can happen at this point, minimum can happen at D, minimum can happen at F, A and H point at the same point. So let us first find out what is the energy level at this junction points A, B, C, D. Okay. We are assuming that energy, kinetic energy at A, is ea some energy is there at a so can some uh, can we find out what is the energy at b how to find e out what yes. huh? e, plus e, plus e, plus e ea plus ea plus integration of md theta yeah whatever energy we have here Right. In this case, that energy must be subtracted from Ea, right? Because this is negative. So that's what given here. Now from here, from this given data, one centimeter is equals to this. So, this is, so one centimeter square is equals to what? 700 into pi by six Newton meter, right? which is nothing but yes. joule, we can call it. The energy one centimeter square is equals to this. That means this quantity here, okay, this quantity here would be Ea minus 0 0.5. And you know, this, this is the area given, this area already given. We don't need to uh, integrate. Through integration, we just find out the area, right? So we don't yes, need sir. to do that. This area is given in centimeter square. What we will do is just multiply this centimeter square into this quantity, pi by six. Okay, that gives us the energy. Can you do this multiplication? Yes, sir. Another way is let us not multiply this. Okay, let us not multiply this. Just find out in terms of say centimeter square. So <clears throat> in terms of centimeter square, if we find out this is so this is the energy level at E B. Can we find out energy level at E C? E what is the energy? Uh, what is the energy level at EC? That is EB, EB plus 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 one point two 
plus 1.2. So if we uh, simplify, just substitute this E A minus. What are the what is the value we get? 0 0.7. E A plus 0 0.7. 0 0.7. E A plus this so ec is equals to a plus this so can we find out ed yes sir. ea minus 0 0.9 this is the case right yes sir Yes, so sir. what what is the answer? E A minus zero point two five. Let us continue this calculation. Can you directly tell me what is E E? E A plus one point two one point five. 1. 1.2 1.2 one one and then ef e a plus 0. Point. 0. Point. 0.5 5.3 all the all the energies are here in what is the unit centimeter square right <clears throat> we can convert centimeter square into joule using this but let's not do that ef now at g what is this value e a minus 0.7 1.06 Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, what is E H equals to E A? E A. E A. Right. So that's why this is a cycle. So it starts from here. Whatever energy is here when cycle completes, the same energy is there. Okay. So now we have the energy labels at A, B, C, D, all the points. So now tell me which where the uh, speed is minimum and where the speed is maximum. Or where the kinetic energy is minimum among these junction points. Minimum at B. Minimum at B. At B. Minimum kinetic energy. Kinetic energy at B. And B. maximum E E E at E right. So uh, as we discussed that, what is the maximum fluctuation of kinetic energy? Is then kinetic energy is equals to what e e minus e b e at e at e point whatever kinetic energy we have is the maximum and at b the kinetic energy is minimum so difference is the maximum fluctuation of kinetic energy right yes sir. what is this 1.7 this is 1.7 and as we said, this is in centimeter square. OK, so we can write down the kinetic energy fluctuation. Maximum fluctuation is equals to this 1.7 multiplied with 700 into pi by 6 Joule, right? What is this value? Roughly, this is 6240. Please check it. Yes, sir. And that's 6239 RI? Yes, sir. Take care. 
so once we have this then uh, we can directly now use that formula right so which was the, the mass moment of inertia mass moment of inertia of the fly wheel j equals to can you tell me what is the formula del k hmm. by omega average square hmm. into k speed uh, coefficient of speed fluctuation hmm. so in the numerator we have this denominator we have what is there 800 into pi by 2 pi by 60 and a square multiplied with 0 0.02 can you can you find out this value सर यहाँ डेल्टा के ही जो है सिक्स ट्वेंटी फोर एक्स होगा सिक्स टू फोर जीरो नहीं हो पाएगा यस सर सिक्स ट्वेंटी थ्री आ रहा था सिक्स ट्वेंटी फोर और सिक्स ट्वेंटी थ्री पॉइंट सेवन ओके यू कैन चेक योर कैलकुलेशन इफ यू आर राइट देन इट्स फाइन अकॉर्डिंग टू माय कैलकुलेशन इट इज सिक्स टू फोर जीरो ठीक है नो प्रॉब्लम इफ यू आर गेटिंग सिक्स टू फोर इट इज फाइन Okay. I think uh, you should get it six two four zero. Okay, I'll check the value. No, no issue. You you just give me what is the final result. Final result may be key point key that or that he will get na. सर थ्री डिजिट आंसर है सिक्स ट्वेंटी थ्री ठीक है कम टू दिस कैलकुलेशन बट आई गेट दिस जीरो नहीं होगा ठीक है कैल यू कैन करेक्ट इट ओके आई आई हैव नो प्रॉब्लम विद दिस बट जस्ट यू हैव अंडरस्टूड व्हाट इज द प्रोसेस वी फॉलोड हियर Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Let's go to next uh, problem. This numerical uh, issue you can fix, no problem. So next example is there is a two-stroke engine. A two-stroke engine. For a two-stroke engine, some of the uh, some of the data is given so the turning moment diagram turning moment is given by this m is equals to um, 15000 plus plus 2000 sin Two theta minus eighteen hundred cos two theta. This theta is the crank angle. Okay, theta is the crank angle, and and that crank angle is measured measured from. inner dead center theek hai turning moment is given what else is given mm. the speed of the engine is given speed of the engine speed is given that is 150 rpm and uh, 
maximum fluctuation of speed is also given. It is given it should not go beyond plus minus 0.5%. So it should not go beyond plus minus 0.5%. That means the range is minus 5% to plus 5%. Okay, that, that is the case. We need to determine what is the moment of inertia of the fly field. So question is determine Moment of inertia of the fly wheel. We have to determine this. Okay. Few things which are given to us that is omega average is 150 into 2 pi by 60. This is in radian per second and uh, KS coefficient of fluctuation of speed. This is what is this? From here one. This is one percent, Anna? not one. One percent means yes. point zero one. Take okay. This is given. Now we have to find out what is the maximum fluctuation of kinetic energy. OK, so we need to determine what is the maximum fluctuation of kinetic energy. And according to the definition, this maximum fluctuation of kinetic energy is what? If you remember, this is theta 1 to theta 2 m uh, minus M average. MR. Yeah, MR for smooth operation. Uh, for smooth operation, MR is equals to M average, right? Otherwise, the speed will increase or decrease. And uh, smooth operation, yes, MR resist resistance torque is equals to average. And whatever given us is this. So the difference d theta. This gives you the maximum fluctuation of kinetic energy. OK. You can, I think, uh, last class, this is not correct. OK, this is not M average. This definition is fine where M is the torque which is coming from the engine and MR is the resistive torque which is for smooth operation, MR is equals to M average. All right, so uh, here you see we know this one. M is given and the unit is also given. Unit is a Newton meter that is given. M is given here. We need to find out what is M average and we need to find out where the uh, this Theta one, the value of theta one and the value of theta two. So ultimately, our problem is now to find out what is m average. We need to find out what is theta one. We need to find out what is theta two. So how to find out uh, these quantities? Theta one, theta two, all these quantities. Uh, find M average zero to yeah, two. Somebody five. said, somebody said differentiate कर दीजिए. Differentiation करके क्या मिलेगा हमें? Delta kinetic energy zero. Theta two we will equate two thousand sine two theta equal to eighteen hundred cos two theta. Okay, I'm doing the the same thing. You just see here to make our discussions and discussion easy. Let us first plot uh, the turning moment and a turning moment diagram. Draw first. Okay. 
So according to this uh, given data, if we take this is our uh, crank angle. So when theta equals to zero, what value you have? Fifteen thousand. Hmm. Thirteen thousand two hundred. Thirteen thousand two hundred. Somewhere here. If we say this line is fifteen thousand, this line. It is not zero. It is fifteen thousand. Okay. This line is fifteen thousand. So the graph would look like graph would look like this okay this is our one revolution it started from here goes to this position. And then again, the cycle goes on. This value you can see from here. This is this is something which is not changing with time with theta. It is not changing. What is changing with theta? This quantity is changing with theta. So the ever and uh, each cycle, this is repeating. What is the average value you will get? This is the average value. No. Yes, sir. Anna, this is the average value you will get. And you can see here from this diagram, th there are two crossing points. These are the only two crossing points through which the turning moment crossing the average value. Anna? So the kinetic energy will be minimum where? First, where is first point is related to minimum kinetic energy and a kinetic energy minimum. And the second point corresponds to the maximum kinetic energy. Is it not? There is yes, no other yes, point sir. where this, this is. So this line corresponds to M average, and this line is your actual M, right? The zero line is somewhere here. The zero energy line is somewhere here. This is the zero line. Uh, this distance is 15,000. Okay, so from here you have from the observation you can see that this 15,000, not writing the unit, 15,000 maybe Newton meter is the M average. Okay, so now to find out theta 1 and theta 2, what can we do? So we have the equation 15,000 minus, minus or plus, plus 2000 sine 2 theta. minus 1800 cos 2 theta. This is M and when this M is equals to M average. And these are the two points theta 1 and theta 2 corresponds to when M is equals to M average, right? Yes, sir. So you are writing here. This is 15,000. Now, can we solve for this sine 2 theta? 2 theta. Can we solve for 2 theta? Tan 2 theta equal to 3 by 5. Tan 2 theta equals to? 3 by 5. 3 by 5. Can you give me the value of 2 theta then? In degrees? Thirty-one degree approx. Hmm? Uh, 
Is it three by five? So nine by ten. So this is point nine. Now tell me the value. Two theta equals to. The calculations are. Um, I have some calculation here. Just do this calculation and tell me the value. Forty one point nine eight. Forty one point. So I'm just Nine. taking this 42 degree, okay? Approximately 42 degree. So if it is 42 degree and you know that 10 theta, whatever maybe this is 2 theta, is positive here in the first quadrant. Also it is positive here in the third quadrant, right? So you, get, you got this value 42 degree, which is in the first quadrant, but it has another solution. Right, and that solution is 180 degree plus 42 degree. Is it not? Yes, sir. Okay, so from these two value, from these two value, can we say that one of the value is related to theta one, and that theta one is 42 by two. That means 21 degree. This is two theta. Okay, we have to find out theta, right? Yes. Okay, let us first write down the values of theta. Theta has now two values. One is 21 degree, another is 90 plus 21 degree. Yes, sir. Okay. So 21 degree obviously is theta 1 and 20. Uh, 111 degree is obviously theta 2. Once we have these values, can we now find out what is the maximum fluctuation of kinetic energy? According to the definition, this is theta 1 to theta 2 m minus m average. D theta. So this is 21 degree. M minus M average is 2000 sine 2 theta minus 1800 cos 2 theta D theta. Can you give me the value? Please calculate this value. Jod, but bolo, we have another problem to solve. Mila coach values. Kya problem or a sign to theta? Karo. Ha, karo. Okay, let me give you the value. Just correct it if it is wrong. Okay, so this is two six nine zero. Point two, and when you do the calculation of uh, this, will become nine one kg meter square. Now we'll move to next topic that is flywheel 
in punching press. Punching press or punching machine, whatever may be the topic. Basically, what in this case, the load is not constant. On the other hand, the torque, supplied torque is constant. In that case also, for smooth operation, we need a uh, fly wheel. Okay, so let us draw a mechanism for punching press. Yesterday we did it in our last class. Uh, we did the same thing. Let me draw again. Okay, this is the circular position of the the through which the crank is rotating and suppose at a point of time when the crank rotated to this position crank is rotating in this direction and it is rotating about this point so the motor is connected here and this is the crank which is connected to the connecting rod like this. And the connecting rod is connected, connected to the puncher, which can punch a hole, which can punch a hole in a in some material which is which may be like this okay and the it makes a hole like this in the material the hole become uh, complete when suppose at some point of time the crank came to this position and the whole making process is completed then okay that time suppose the puncher is here the making whole making process is completed so the energy required is only during this period only during this period energy is required so let us say that the angle crank angle is measured from this point which is the inner dead center from this the starting of the punching this angle so this angle is theta one and when the punching is completed this angle let's say this angle is theta 2 okay and the thickness the puncher moves is let's say t okay the crank length length of the crank crank length is a r length of the connecting rod is a l and then stroke length is a s stroke length means the movement of the puncher from the inner the inner dead center to outer dead center okay
you see one thing in this mechanism the load is only acting when in between theta 1 to theta 2 okay so if we draw a diagram of the uh, load suppose sir uh, same kya kya bol rahe hai t or s same hai kya no no t or s same nahi maybe no t or s same nahi okay the you can see from the diagram this crank when it goes down to this position the s will have that distance okay s will be like this from this point to this point this is s t and s are not the same okay sir. yeah now let's first draw the uh, the diagram for for the load so load is zero load is zero from from let's say from a point i i this is theta equals to zero point and suppose this point is theta equals to theta one so up to this point load is zero and then suddenly the load increases during punching the load increases we are assuming here during punching the load is constant and that load is constant up to a point when this theta is equals to theta 2. And then what happens? Then again, the load is zero. This is our MR, the resisting torque. Okay. On the other hand, for smooth operation, what we need to do is we mean need to maintain a constant value or or from the motor we have a torque which is which we obtain is constant like this this is the m we have this is constant okay. along this we have the crank angle along this we have the loading torque all right now if you just uh, see what happens to the um, speed of the engine okay so if we just plot what happens to the speed of the motor so when there is no load up to this point there is no load and then there is some load and then there is again no load so when there is no load the the speed there will be acceleration right the speed will be increasing parabolically and then during loading because you see during loading your supply is less than loading so speed should decrease that time and it is it should decrease to a minimum value and then again it will increase and this way the cycle will be completed okay so this corresponds to omega maximum this point corresponds to omega minimum is it clear to all of you and this whole cycle of theta is for two pi angle one revolution okay now let us write down something related to energy so energy required for one punch energy required for one punch 
let's say that is E. Is E. Now energy supplied by the motor during the cycle. Energy supplied by the motor. During the cycle, one cycle, during one cycle. This is also in one cycle. Because in one cycle it completes one punch. So energy supplied by the motor in one cycle. How much energy should be supplied by the motor? If for one punch. E is required. How much energy should be supplied by the motor in one cycle? M into 2 pi. It should be equals to E, right? If E is the energy required, we don't know what is M. Right now, we don't know what is M. You were right, M into 2 pi. So we don't know what is M now, but suppose to make a punch we need e amount of energy so in whole cycle the motor should be supply should supply this energy right okay. yes or no yes, yes sir. sir so energy supplied by the motor what is the amount of energy supplied by the motor during punching during punching what is the energy supplied by the motor it is a fraction of e right what is that fraction this fraction depends on duration what is that duration duration is theta 2 minus theta 1 angle is the duration during which the punching is taking place this divided by 2 pi yes yes sir right yes sir so energy supplied by the so re if it is required e amount of energy for one punching and the motor during that time supplying this energy rest of the energy should be supplied by the flywheel right during punching yes. so energy supplied by the flywheel during punching what is this this must be e into 1 minus this quantity theta 1 minus theta 2 by 2 pi right yes sir yes sir okay if it is so then during the rotation of crank from theta 1 to theta 2 the speed drops here we have said this uh, during uh, from theta 1 to theta 2 speed drops from omega maximum to omega minimum okay so then the maximum fluctuation of kinetic energy this is equals to this quantity only yes sir right because the during when there is no operation of punching that time what is happening the flywheel is is storing energy. Whatever energy is flywheel storing during no operation, that energy is has to be used during punching. Okay, throughout the non-punching uh, revolution, part of non-punching revolution, that time energy is stored in the flywheel, and the same energy is used during punching that means what is the maximum fluctuation of kinetic energy that is the energy used by the flywheel during punching right
Yes, sir. Uh, if it is so, then we go back to the definition of maximum fluctuation of uh, kinetic energy. This is the maximum kinetic energy minus minimum kinetic energy, which can be written as half J into omega max square minus half J into omega minimum square. Agreed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK. So can we simplify a little bit? Uh, we can simplify it this way. This can be written as half J into KS into omega average square that we have done earlier also. And uh, there, from there only we got the relation, uh, this relation. Okay. But uh, this can be useful for this particular case. How? Here we, we we will assume one thing. I need uh, five, ten minutes to complete this discussion. Are you with me? So this theta one, yes, theta two minus theta one by two pi. This is equals to the thickness by 2s. Do you understand this? This is the total rotation by the crank 2 pi. This is the total linear motion by the puncher and a 2s. Puncher goes from this point to this point. This distance is s. Okay. Forward stroke, it goes from this point to this point, right? From this point to this point. In the backward stroke, it goes from this point to this point. So what is the length it covers? 2s. What is the revolution covered by the crank? This. And during punching, theta 2 minus theta 1 is the angle during punching. What is the motion of the puncher? Is the thickness of the punching, okay? This is a assumption. This assumption we are making here to correlate thetas with the thickness. OK, so T is the thickness here. Have I written it there? Whole. Okay, now we will take one example and that and uh, we'll finish this discussion with that example. So there is a punching machine. Punching machine is there and uh, it punches six holes per minute. Six holes per minute. Then uh, the work done per punching is Work done per punching is given by this. Okay, six six hundred joule per centimeter square of seared area. This is the work done required per centimeter square seared area. Is it six hundred joule? The whole diameter, whole diameter 
is given as let's say this is d 3.8 centimeter the plate thickness which need to be punched plate thickness is given this t is equals to 3.2 centimeter another uh, data is given which is the stroke stroke which is given by s is equals to 10.2 centimeters maximum speed of flywheel at its radius of gyration maximum speed of flywheel at its radius of gyration this speed is uh, 27.5 meter per second see the speed of the flywheel is given uh, meter per second that means what and it is said that it is it at its radius of gyration so whatever may be the radius of the flywheel you just go to the radius of gyration let's say this is the radius of gyration at that radius of gyration what is the speed that is 27.5 is given it has some advantage this kind of this velocity is 27.5 that means omega r is 7 this if this is omega and uh, maximum so that means this what they are saying is omega maximum multiplied with r if r is the radius of gyration let me see which notation uh, i have used okay, sometimes you use for radius of gyration we generally use this uh, k so this is equals to your 27.5 omega into k k is the radius of gyration okay so in this case also we need to find out what is the what is the mass of the flywheel so that the speed does not fall below 24.5 meter per second the question is determine mass of the flywheel so that the speed does not fall below 24.5 meter per second again at k minimal radius of gyration at radius of gyration it should not fall there that means we also saying here omega minimum multiplied with k should be 24.5 so you determine what is the mass of the flywheel okay to solve this problem and we if we want to use this formula we need to find out what is the maximum fluctuation of kinetic energy and then you see one thing from here see this j can be written as half mk square hai na if k is the radius of gyration then you see this quantity can be written as k into omega maximum square and the other quantity also can be written as k into omega minimum square hai na likh sakte hai na then these two data this data and this data are given 27.5 24.5 okay these two data are given so we need to find out what is m 
right? If we know this fluctuation of kinetic energy, maximum fluctuation of kinetic energy. Let us now find out that if we can find out, then we are done. So here, what we need to do, we need to use this, uh, that there are six holes per minute. Okay. We have to use all of these things. First thing, what is the seared area per punch? Seared area per punch. Let us call it AS, the area per punch. The diameter is given. Pi D is the perimeter and multiplied with thickness. That is the total seared area. So can you find out this? D is given, T is given. Huh? Energy required per punch. So what is the energy required per punch? This is equals to 600 into S. Okay, this is 382 centimeter square. 38.2, right? And so this is 600 into 38.2, which is equals to 2292, I think. Sir, for per punch, we have so six divides are now No, no, no. Per punch, what is the energy required? Six Q divide karenge. This is no as a name bull ranky egg revolution is six holes or I. It will speed the hour. Per minute, six holes. One okay. revolution, only one hole. Okay, one revolution, one hole. So, area, seared area. This is the seared area. Multiplied with the uh, energy required for seared area. Is the total energy required for one punch. Okay, this value, please correct this value. 22920. Okay, 920. Yes, sir. Okay, now we will use that assumption. This assumption we will use. Okay. So, which means that theta 2 minus theta 1 by 2 pi. This is equals to T by 2s. So T is 3.2 and 2S 10.2. Okay. Now, if you remember kinetic energy fluctuation, this maximum, we got a relation like this. 1 minus theta 2 minus theta 1 by 2 pi. E is now known to us. Okay. This is 22920 and that is multiplied with 1 minus this quantity is now this quantity 3.2 by 2 into 10.2. Okay. And this is equals to, you know, already we have discussed. Jf into this omega max square minus omega mean square. And then from this, uh, you do the calculation. I'm not doing it. 19324.7. This, this one, this value? Yes, sir. This one you are saying? Okay, whatever may be, you yes, get sir. the value. And this, this then half into M into your B maximum square minus B minimum square. 
these values are given, right? This is your V maximum, and this is your V minimum, and this V maximum, V minimum at radius of gyration. So can you find out this value of M? There is another question really related to this. What is the energy required per minute? 4 to 9 for this. This is this M. Yes, sir. I have this value. So I correct required. Per minute. What is this value? Energy required per minute. And what is the power of the motor? Energy required per minute is uh, this fluctuation of sorry. The in one cycle, this is the energy uh, you need. So in one minute, you need this amount of energy per minute. Once you have per minute, this amount of energy divided by 60 gives you the power. This is the, this what is motor you need for this operation. So from these calculations, what we get, the requirement is in a minute, we want to punch holes, six holes per minute. And punching required this work done. Maximum speed, you have given some limitations. Then what is the motor required for this operation? It's, it's power, we can calculate from here, and the flywheel, okay, that's all. And uh, we stop here this discussion. All the best for your mid semester. If you have questions, I'm here. The class is over. You can leave, or if you have questions, you can stay and ask me. All right, I have another class from 11. Okay, I give you five minutes. You can ask me questions. If no question is there, okay, all the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.